Hi, this is Paris Wolf teaching Security Plus. So with the fundamental security concept, there's the gap analysis. That is taking your current state of where you're at and where you want to be. And you're looking at the gap or the difference between them. So there's the technical gap analysis, looking at your technical infrastructure, the weaknesses and where you want to go. And then the business gap analysis, such as looking at the processes of that, identifying the weaknesses and capabilities. Now, in a zero trust architecture, that's it's a concept or a model. And so it emphasizes the need to verify and secure all resources and regardless of their location within the network. So just because you work inside the corporate building doesn't mean that you should automatically authenticate. They want to make sure every device is authenticated and should have access and each person within that environment should have access because uh, previously a long time ago, if you worked in the corporate office, just all the devices might work and you might just go to the printer and it would work. Now that's no longer the case. You're going to have to log into your computer system using a username and password. And when you go to use the printer, it's also going to authenticate you there as well. <clears throat> so there's the control plane and that's responsible for making decisions about how data should be forwarded within a network. An example would be a routing protocol, network management, policy enforcement, and traffic engineering. And then there's the data plane. That's known as the forwarding plane or the forwarding engine. And it's responsible for the actual forwarding of the data packet packets based on the decisions made by the control plane. And I'm going to explain all this here with a picture. So here's an example of the control plane and data plane. So the end device here wants to communicate with this end device over here. The control plane is going to figure out what the best path is because such as OSPF, these are going to be at different speeds. And so it wants to take the fastest route in order to get there. And so if this is the fastest route, then the end device is going to store that configuration of this is the path to get there. If the data rates change, then it may find a new location while well, the data plane is actually implementing and it, so when the router is trying to figure out the best path, it's going to look up the routing table or the control plane and it's going to send the data. So the control plane is controlling the best path to get to the destination and the data plane is looking up that best path and then sending the data. So with the control plane, there is the these all fall under the zero trust architecture. So with the control plane, there is the adaptive identity. So privileges are based on various factors such as user behavior, device posture, location, contextual information. So user behavior, let's say you log in every day at 7 a.m. Well, if you log in at midnight, it's going to identify that. The threat scope reduction reduction. That includes segmentation of the network resources or enforcing least privilege access. So least privilege, you should only have the minimum amount of access that you need access to. So you shouldn't be able to, if you're in the IT department, you shouldn't be able to get into the HR's files, but you should have your IT privileges. Now with policy driven access control that takes into account of various contextual factors and conditions at the same time of the access attempts. So data is based on the user identity, device attributes and other contextual factors. So policies, those are like written rules. Policy administration, that's assigning the roles and permissions to users and devices. So defining the policy hierarchies, dependencies, and inheritance rules to ensure consistency and effectiveness in the policy enforcement. And then the policy engine, that's the software component that actually is responsible for evaluating and enforcing those security policies within the network. And so these are very similar because it's policy based. And so we'll take a look there. Oh, it doesn't have any more information. So with the policy driven access control, you're going to look at why people would have access to certain information if you were the management and the administration piece here would be assigning those roles. So this group here is in the HR department. This group here is in the finance department. This here is the mechanic department and so you're defining those policies and administration. The data plane. Okay, this is the information that just forwards the information. So you have implicit trust zones. So that's areas within the network where trust is assumed without explicit verification of identity or authorization. So you may have an area where it's just assumed trust. 
An example could be your phone connecting to your home Wi-Fi where it just automatically connects. The subject slash system, that refers to an entity that attempts to access a resource within a system. And the policy enforcement point. So that's responsible for enforcing access controls based on the predefined policies. So when a subject attempts to access a resource, let's say it's a cell phone, it's going to be put up against the it's going to evaluate that request and see if it meets those policies and rules for the enforcement decisions. So if the enforcement is saying you need the latest security um, update and your phone doesn't have that, then it won't let you have access to the network.